Hello, it's Alex, the bookubus. That's right, Halo for Thrifter is no more. If you didn't see my last video, my 2020 review and 2021 goals, then feel free to go check that out if you'd like to hear a little bit more about the name change. But basically it was time for a change and I think the bookubus fits my channel a bit better and it kind of conveys the bookish and horror elements pretty well. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. Feel free to let me know what you think. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favourite horror books that I read in 2020, not necessarily published that year, in fact most likely not. And for a bit of perspective, I read 101 books in 2020, about 90% of which was horror, so I'm pulling from quite a few and I had two five-star reads, which isn't a lot considering, but you know, I'll take it. I also had three four and a half star reads and an absolute ton of four star reads. So yeah, narrowing down the four star reads to just five to make this a top 10 was pretty difficult, but here it is nevertheless. And a few of these I already have separate review videos for, so if you want to hear more of my thoughts I will leave links to them so you can go check them out. Basically I thought all of these books were awesome and I would highly recommend them. So starting off with the four star reads, I have an anthology. This is The New Flesh, a literary tribute to David Cronenberg edited by Sam Richard and Brendan Vedito. This is an absolutely fantastic anthology. I really liked every story in this one and some I absolutely loved. So if you are a Cronenberg fan then this is an absolute must read. It takes that idea and uses it in a lot of different ways. So some you can definitely tell they are taking inspiration from certain Cronenberg films. Some of them are more inspiration from ideas and themes, but yeah, there's a really great variety in here and some absolutely fantastic authors. So if you're looking for an anthology, then I highly recommend this one. Next up is Rebecca Moon by Michelle Spence. This is about a young girl, the titular Rebecca Moon, who is kind of known as a bit of a freak in the small town where she lives and she doesn't have any friends but she does have some very special powers of mind control and she is able to bend people to her will and make them do certain things so she is going to make this town pay for what they have done to her and her plan would have gone smoothly if it wasn't for a psychiatrist who grew up in the town and is now moving back to her hometown and she sees these strange things going on and figures out that they're all related to Rebecca and yeah that's all I'll say about this one but this was a really great slow burn and had some really great characters especially Rebecca and some really amazing descriptions of what she is able to do. I'll just leave it at that. Next is Let's Go Play at the Adams by Mendel W. Johnson. This is about a babysitter who is taking care of a couple of young children while their parents go away on a long holiday and the kids and a few of their friends from the neighbourhood decide to tie the babysitter up so they can run free and do whatever they want but things go further than that because they find out that they're actually really bored without people telling them what to do and having to clean up after themselves and such like and they turn their attentions to the babysitter and this is not a fun read. It is really brutal and yeah isn't going to be something everyone will want to pick up even and even if you do pick it up it still might not be for you but I loved this one. I really enjoyed his writing style 
and the characters in here were all absolutely fascinating in their own ways. This book made me cry and it's definitely one that I still think about some time after reading it and I think it's one that will continue to stay with me for quite some time. Next is Now You're One of Us by Essa Nonami. This is about a woman who gets married and moves in with her husband's family and she soon starts to suspect that there's something not quite right going on with this family despite their very friendly and welcoming exterior. And I won't say too much about this one, I definitely wouldn't want to spoil the direction that this one takes, but I thought this one had really great writing, really great atmosphere, and just that general sense of unease throughout the book as you are following this character trying to figure out exactly what's going on and yeah exactly how that plays out. Next is Deliver Us From Evil by Alan Lee Harris. This is set in a small town where several years previously a young girl had been abducted and awful things happened to her and this has kind of had a hold over the town ever since and has really affected all of its inhabitants and the story picks up following a few different characters, one of which being an orphaned teenage boy who is adopted by someone in this small town and as the story progresses we find out that maybe the awful thing that happened to this young girl some years ago, whatever might have caused that is maybe still around and there are a lot of strange goings on. This book was super creepy, it really got under my skin in quite a few different places and genuinely gave me the creeps and I loved it for that. It is a bit of a slow burn but there are some interesting characters, really good writing and yeah I just found this such a compelling story. Now moving on to a few four and a half star books we have Cold Moon Over Babylon by Michael McDowell. This is a southern gothic tale of supernatural revenge. It's set in a small town and we are following a particular family and something awful that happens to one of them and the chain of events that occurs after that. We flit around different members of the town and really get to know who's who and the different dynamics between people of this area and there is some really creepy supernatural goings on here. This was another one that creeped me out in quite a few places. I really like his writing and his characters. This one had just such a compelling story and then the supernatural element was so well done and really unique and yeah just worked so well within the story as a whole. Next is The Good House by Tana Nareev Du. This is about a woman who is living in the house which was once her grandmother's and it's known locally as The Good House and there is a family tragedy that occurs one summer and in order to deal with that she moves away to a different part of the country and yeah just focuses on her work to try and get on with her life but at some point further down the line she returns to the good house trying to decide whether to sell it or not and while she's there she uncovers a lot more about the house, about her grandmother and about how this tragedy that occurred some years earlier exactly came to happen and this book is so well written, it is so layered the characters are incredibly well written and there is a kind of magic and voodoo element going on here which I thought was really great. It has a couple of really great creepy moments as well. It is not afraid to get kind of brutal and violent at times. This is a pretty long book but I found it to be such an absorbing read. I really flew through it because I just needed to know what was going to happen next. Next up is another anthology. 
This is October Dreams, a celebration of Halloween, edited by Richard Chismar and Robert Morrish. This is Halloween in book form. It is jam-packed full of stories from a ton of different authors, some really well known and others maybe not so much. It also features a bunch of Halloween memories from some of the authors, which is a really fun addition to the book and just, yeah, it's really cool to read them in amongst the actual stories. There are a couple of sections that talk about Halloween themed movies and Halloween themed novels and stories, so I'm definitely going to be referring back to this one when October rolls around again. This, needless to say, is absolutely perfect for the Halloween season and yeah, is just so evocative of that time of year in so many different ways. It's a really great anthology. Okay, and now we're on to my two five-star reads, one of which is Strange Angels by Kathy Koja. This is about a character who ends up becoming friends with someone who has been diagnosed as schizophrenic and initially the two come together over a shared love of art and starts off as a nurturing friendship but it then develops into an obsessive relationship and goes from being nurturing into being harmful. This one was a really amazing character study and relationship study. As usual, I absolutely loved Kathy Koja's writing here and this was another one that made me cry. So there's that. Yeah, I thought this was an amazing read. And last up is The Crow by James O'Barr. This is a graphic novel that I had been meaning to read for years. I love the film adaptation and have seen it countless times and have always meant to pick up the book but hadn't done so until very recently. This is about a couple who are very much in love and they meet a very horrific end due to the actions of a gang and the main character is able to come back for revenge against these people, so he is travelling around tracking each one down. This is really beautiful and emotional, it's also very violent and brutal. It deals with themes such as love and loss and grief and revenge and I knew I was going to like this one but I ended up yeah, loving it even more than I thought I was going to. It really is a fantastic work and yeah, not only the story and the characters but the artwork as well is absolutely wonderful and I think if you've seen the film but not read the original book then I highly recommend you do so. So those were my top 10 horror books of 2020. Let me know if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your thoughts or if you are thinking about picking any of them up. I hope you enjoy them just as much as I did. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully I will see you again in my next video. Bye!